How's everybody doing? All right, good, good. We're going to do a little bit of how-to today, but a more, a, a more of that is going to be we're going to kind of challenge each other's thought process a little bit. And act, I'm going to act as a, a defibrillator, if you will, and I'm going to wake you up in some areas you didn't even know you needed to be woken up in. Is everybody okay with that? Say yes or yes. yes. Okay, good deal. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you all for being here because it shows where your priority is at, not only for your life, but for your business. Because not only are you a Sphere Rocket client, you're in the Sphere Rocket mastermind. You take time away from your family and your business to be here. So give yourself a round of applause for doing that. And then secondly, to Justin and the team, I am, I am extremely grateful uh, and it is my privilege to be here uh, with you all. Um, the platform is a privilege that not everyone gets and I've had the unique privilege of being able to to communicate from the platform from the past 14 years. So I hope today you're going to leave with at least one thing that you came for and one thing that you absolutely had no idea that you came for. Is everybody good with that? Say yes or yes. yes. Great, let me ask you a question real quick. This question was asked to me about 14 years ago and talk about a defibrillator. It instantly woke me up in a time that I needed to be woken up. That question is, who's missing out? Because you're not showing up. One more time. Who's missing out? Because you're not showing up. Well, what do you mean, Sebastian? I'm here. Physically, you may be here, but there are areas and there are things in your life and your business that you are not doing. And because of that, someone is missing out. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't settle too well with me. Knowing that I can control showing up and doing something, taking my gifts and talents into the world that I've been blessed with to greater impact somebody's life and business. Is there a better feeling? There just isn't. Today, I want to talk to you about how podcasting could radically change your life and your business if you let it. Why am I qualified to speak on that? Because I've lived it over the past decade. I've had the unique privilege of just continuing to show up and leverage the platform and podcasting to build relationships, to share my gifts with the world, and show people what's possible. I want you to remember that anything is possible, but only 100% of the time, okay? Sometimes we forget that. We get so far in our way and so far in our own shit that we can't even get out of our own way and we wonder why we feel stuck. I had somebody call me last week and say, Sebastian, I'm stuck. I said, you're not stuck. Stuck is a choice and a mindset. Massive action solves a lot of that. It really does. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about what that looks like with podcasting. And then I'm gonna show you, by show of hands, who actively is using VAs in their business and Sphere Rocket clients? I know that we've got a few visitors in here. Okay, outstanding. I help people go from idea to iTunes in 90 days or less with our, with our launch program. When I work with individuals like yourselves, you guys already have a team and are outsourcing specific things. So when we get towards the end of what I'm gonna to talk to you about today, uh, I'm gonna offer you something that allows us all to work together, for all of us to jump in the sandbox together. Your team, your VAs, my expertise, and we're able to create something you guys can get excited about and take all my secrets and get out in the world and do something about it. Sound good? All right, let's get started. Here's how cool I am. At 20 years old, I decided I wasn't gonna go to college, there was a better way, and I was gonna have a kid instead. Brilliant idea, huh? I took it a step further too. Not only was I gonna have a kid at 20, I was gonna have a kid with a woman that did not wanna be a mother. So she checked out. She said, you wanted her, you raise her. I said, not a problem. So I moved to Chicago, Chicago to Newport Beach, California. Became an entrepreneur shortly after that because I went to a sales job one day and they told me I couldn't go pick her up at daycare because everyone has kids and you need to figure it out. I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out all right, but I won't be working here when I figure it out. And I became an entrepreneur because I knew that little girl needed her daddy whenever she needed her daddy and I would go and figure it out. And if I was gonna cause stress and financial stress, I was gonna cause it myself, write my own paycheck. So I became an entrepreneur at an early age of 22 years old. And I went on to continue to raise this little girl and she's now 22, she just graduated from college. She went to Grand Canyon University out in Phoenix with a degree in psychology to learn why her parents were so crazy. 
and she now lives in Dallas. She's in the master's program studying mental health counseling. So showing up when you don't know how to show up and just know if I just keep on getting the reps in every day as a parent, something's going to happen. She's a great kid. She's living a great life, and I'm extremely proud. Now I'm free. I'm 45 years old, empty nester, traveling all over the place, getting to hang out with incredible human beings like you guys and share my gifts with you. But that was the beginning. That was last year out in Phoenix when she graduated. I can't believe I had dry eyes for the picture because I was just a boo-hooing away. I just couldn't believe it. If you have young kids, just remember, the days drag on, but the years fly by because I just absolutely cannot believe that that girl is 22. She'll be 23 next month. Mind-boggling to me. But that's the beginning of the story of how I became an entrepreneur, my real driving force. She still really is, but now I'm free. Uh, nobody needs to be home for dinner at all. So shortly after I moved back to Miami, 2008, I lost everything in the recession. So I moved back with a duffel bag and my daughter. And in 2010, I met an individual that worked for Tony Robbins at the time, part of his core team that travels with, with him uh, of six people. And we met for, for a drink uh, after being introduced that week. And she was the one to pose that question to me. She said, hey, Sebastian, so what's next? And I said, I don't know. And she looked at me dead in the eyes and she said, that is a fucking problem. Pardon my French, but that was the exact thing she said to me. And these were my offended days. So I looked at her like, huh, who are you to tell me what I'm doing with my life is a problem. And I'm thinking to myself silently, you better shut up, dude, because she works for Tony. You got like eight bucks to your name. You might want to listen to what she has to say. So, 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 so what do you mean? And she said, uh, I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Who's missing out? Because you're not showing up. Boom. Light bulb moment. That Monday, I went and conceptualized what would become a digital agency that I launched called Social Buzz TV. And I ran around town for a year not knowing how I was going to monetize this. Because in 2010, when you're telling people about social media, you're speaking a very foreign language and no one is listening. It is falling on deaf ears and people are in the mood of, I've never needed this stuff. I don't need it now. But I knew that if you just made enough noise, someone would come knock on your door. I just knew it. That includes the police after 10 PM. <laughs> so I continued to evangelize the fact that I was launching the biggest, baddest social media company, that we were going to create content, that we were going to be the new media, that we were going to help you better understand what's possible with social media. Right around that time, I met a guy by the name of Gary Vaynerchuk. Anybody heard of Gary? Yeah, Gary's great. He's a worldwide phenomenon now. I had the unique privilege of, of meeting him very, very early on. We became great friends, and he mentored my journey and really helped me better understand the power of personal branding in addition to branding a business. He said, Sebastian, your personal brand in perpetuity is your reputation. And I never forgot that. Everyone's waking up now to that reality. Here we are some 14 years later. Everyone wants to build a personal brand, read a book, become an entrepreneur, and a speaker. But... For a long, long time, Gary has been evangelizing the fact of personal branding because that's who people do business with. They do business with you. Sure, they transact with your company, but they do business with you. So he helped me really shape and mold what I would do with Social Buzz TV. But the, the, the problem was I, I, I built that out for the next six years, and we did very, very well. But I didn't like the work. It was very labor-intensive, creating content, posting social media managers popping up all over the place. It just wasn't what I felt was my calling. So in 2016, I did some really, really deep work on myself. I didn't know that I was going to do that work. I met a girl on a dating app. I wanted a girlfriend, and careful what you ask for, because I found one. And I met her on March 1st, 2016. We met for a beer, and she said, Sebastian, I'm in a personal development course right now. And I'm, you know, ego's on high tilt back then. And I said, oh, tell me about personal development. Tony Robbins, two times. The Landmark Forum, twice. What you didn't know is I walked out one time. I went to these courses and these classes, and I came home, and I, and I didn't do anything with them at all. But a couple weeks later, she called and said, hey, I just signed you up for the course. You're, you're going. And I said, okay. And I was completely resistant to that whole process. But I went through those doors, and I went through it. And somebody said, hey, hey, just stay with it. Just continue. Just do the training, Sebastian. Because the only way out is through. You're the only one that can set yourself free. And I thought, hmm, set myself free. That sounds pretty ideal. 
Because what I realized when I was in this course was that I didn't hate the work that I was doing. I hated myself. And when you hate yourself, you hate everything in your path. I came out of that course learning how to do a couple things. I learned how to love myself. Imagine that. And I learned how to become completely accountable for my life and everything that's happened to it, past, present, and future. It was time to stop blaming mom and dad. It was time to put my big boy britches on and step into my power on who I am and get out in the world and do something with that. That was 2016. No, it wasn't. It was comparable to it. It's not around anymore. And uh, it took about six months off that year. I didn't mean to do it. I lived on a, I was on kind of a slump of a year. I didn't want to do the social media stuff anymore. I just got to a point. And, I, and then I, when you start to do internal work, it's messy. <laughs> it's real messy. And life kind of checks out for a moment. But I think that's just how it goes. It's going to take as long as it's going to take. But by the end of that year, I was like, okay, it's time to dust myself off and get back in the game. What can we do here? How do we leave the digital marketing industry and still stay in it? What an oxymoron that is, huh? So I went and rented a co-working uh, desk for a couple hundred bucks a month around the corner from my house. And I ran into an old friend who had an internet radio show. I'm like, how's that internet radio show going? And she said, great. And I said, how do you know? And she couldn't answer that question. And I said, did you know there's an easier way? There's a thing called a podcast that you can start. And I had had a podcast, but it wasn't something that was like the core part of my brand. I used it to leverage new relationships and meet new people. And I said, you know, you can start a podcast. You can record the thing from your house. You don't even have to go anywhere. She goes, I don't know how to do that. Can you help me start a podcast? Boom, another awakening moment. Antennas went up. I literally went back up to my rented desk and I mapped out what would become the Podcast Launch Lab, which is a turnkey podcast launch solution to take you from idea to iTunes in 90 days or less. I literally have not looked back since then. That was the end of 2016. We're going on almost eight years. That's insane to even say, but I found my lane because I put non-negotiables in place for my life and myself as part of loving myself. I said, what do you want to do, Sebastian? Like, what do you really want to do? I said, I want to speak, I want to tell jokes, and I want to launch podcasts. Because if it's not those three things, I'm just not leaving the house. And thank God that's exactly what's taken place. And it continues to evolve and get better and better and better. But I don't just help people start a podcast because it's a profitable business. I help people start a podcast because I get to see them step into a completely different version of themselves. I get to see them step into a different version of themselves that they didn't even know. I can't speak publicly. I'm not going to get in front of a camera. People's number one fear, public speaking. Number two, dying. <laughs> Riddle me that one. They say, I'm not going to. I can't do that. I can't get on stage. Yeah, you can. We're going to rip it right out of you. I promise you. Because somebody's missing out because you're sitting here going, I can't do that. I can't do that. So Gary is a huge, uh, a huge, huge part of, of my journey. And of course, everyone knows the guy's a freaking worldwide phenomenon, but he's an incredible human being. One of the most humble, present. You talk about, you know, some people you talk to and you just feel like you're the only person in the room. Gary's got that gift to make you feel that way. Really is. So shout out to Gary V. If you don't follow him, climb out from under the rock, please. So I want you to imagine just for a second, maybe you need to close your eyes just for a second and think, just for a second, like, what is possible by starting a podcast? Because people say, well, I see Joe Rogan and I see my favorite podcast or I see this and that. Maybe I should start a podcast. Cool, why are you starting a podcast? Well, but, uh, nobody really knows why they're doing it. But I want you to think for a second. Just, just imagine what's possible. Let me paint a picture for you here. New business, new exposure, new relationships, consistent content. Most people suck at content. I should be doing this, I should be doing that. Tony Robbins says people find themselves shooting all over themselves instead of just doing it. But I want you to think about what's possible. But why? Why does it even matter? I don't know, you tell me. That's your job to figure out why you're doing what you're doing. Simon Sinek coined a phrase that said people don't care what you do, they care why you do it. And it's so true. They also care 
about what's in it for them based on what you're doing. But today I want to set the record straight real quick for everybody. And I want to clear the air. And I want to let every single person in this room know that yes, you can. I know that sounds a little woo-woo, but sometimes we need a little bit of woo to get us back in the game. But I want to remind everybody that yes, you can for a specific reason. And that reason is somewhere at some point in time, someone told you that you couldn't do something and you believed them. And then you took it a step further and you continued to live your life according to that story of I can't do something. So if it's okay with everybody, I want to set the record straight today and let everybody know you can do whatever you want to do. And today, you can. Whatever your thing is, maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's a book, whatever your thing is, you can do it. I like to remind people of that often. Was this a motivational speaker? I don't know. Call it whatever you want to get. I just hope you're leaving this room with one thing that you came for and one thing you didn't even know that you needed. And maybe it's just that reminder and that gentle nudge. I like to call it a hug with a slap in the back of the head that yes, yes, you can. So why should you start a podcast? Let me, let me jog your mind a little bit about some reasons why you can start a podcast. Number one, it helps you tell your story. We connect with stories. That's part of the human experience is being able to embrace stories, resonate with stories. And that's how we start to build relationships with other people because we resonate with what they're saying. It allows you to serve others and allows you to serve your community. It allows you to build new relationships and it allows you to create a platform to serve and to connect. So, first things first, very first step in the podcast process, and so many people get this wrong. Why are you doing it in the first place? Have you even given it a thought to why you're doing what you're doing? Well, no, I haven't even stopped to think about that for a second. I mean, I'm doing it because everybody else is. Eh. Let's try again. Remember, Simon Sinek said, people don't care what you do, they care why you do it. So figuring out why you're starting a podcast, that's the number one thing I do. I spend most of my day talking people out of starting a podcast instead of starting it because I'm deeply passionate on people really dialing in exactly why they're doing what they're doing. So I'd like to run you through a quick exercise to help jog your mind a little bit about finding your why because I can't do it for you. Justin can't do it for you. The other speakers can't help you. Your peers can't help you. That, my friends, is a one-player job. So you run through this quick exercise. If I had my dream business, I would be doing fill in the blank. I feel most fulfilled when I do fill in the blank. My deepest desire is fill in the blank. Let's do a little ad lib real quick, okay? If I had my dream business, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing right now, helping people step into the best version of themselves and radically change their life and their business because they started a podcast. I feel most fulfilled when I see people step out of what they think is possible and into a completely different realm and go, wow, I didn't even know that that was possible. That's what really gets me going. My deepest desire is to see people radically change their life and their business because they started a podcast. Not because they hired Sebastian. I'm not doing anything. I'm just a vessel. I am just a link in the chain. I'm just here to do exactly where I'm told. But that's my deepest desire. And I see it happen on a daily basis. Through my talks, through my content. Some people hire me. Some people don't. Some people I don't even know. I had a lady randomly DM me. We'll do a question at the end. Well, I had a lady randomly DM me like notes that she had taken on my book and she took screenshots of them and she sent them to me randomly. I read your book and I took notes. I'm going through it a second time. That's why I do what I do. Not an ego stroke. But she read my book and did notes and she was reading through the book for the second time. I thought, how cool is that? That's all possible for all of us here. Hey, I listened to your podcast episode and I went and did this with my life. How good does that feel? It really, really does. Hey, I read your book, and I finally did that thing. Thank you. So here's what it takes to start, okay? First of all, figure out why you're doing what you're doing. People connect with that why. 
Next is, what are you gonna call the show? What's the name of the podcast? There's a lot of stupid podcast names out there. Don't be that. Don't do that. Well, how do I avoid doing that? Well, we gotta do a thing mm, a little uncomfortable. It's called get feedback. Honest feedback, not from your mom. She loves everything that you do. All the people that kind of make you feel a little uncomfortable when you get their feedback, because that's where the magic really starts to happen. So come up with a name, an idea, and a concept of what you can do with the show. I'm telling you right now, I'll let you in on a little secret that's not really a secret. There's two main reasons you're starting a podcast. Number one, to interview people you wanna do business with and generate revenue and monetize your podcast through your guests, number one. Number two, to solve all of your social media content problems. One podcast episode, three to 10 pieces of micro content per episode, building a content catalog, posting a couple of times a day, problem solved. Most of us are not doing that. A podcast affords you the opportunity to actually do that. So a name. Another thing there's a lot of stupid things of, names. You're like, what in the world is that? Listen, Google and Amazon and all these off the wall names and show me and all these, what was it? Show, show, show on me. Um, unique, but most can't get away with get it. Get it? These aren't AOL screen names. This is your brand. This is an extension of your brand. It needs to be something that people can resonate with. Sebastian, what's the name of your podcast? It's called Beyond the Story with Sebastian Ross. I like to tell people stories. Makes sense. My other podcast, Podcast Suck. Probably makes sense that the podcast guy has a podcast about podcasting. See how it resonates? It's quick. It's easy. You get I don't have to go, you get it? You get it? So we're not trying to confuse people. We're trying to communicate it effectively through the name. And it doesn't have to be the name of your company. It can be an extension of your company brand. It can be an extension of your personal brand. It doesn't have to match it. And for the love of all things podcast microphones, please don't include the word podcast in your podcast name. Well, not, why not, Sebastian? It's a podcast because it's redundant and obvious, homie. Everybody clear about that? We're starting a podcast. It's going to be called the Bob Smith Podcast. No kidding. Just make sure it complements your brand, personal brand, business brand, whatever it is, and get feedback. Post it on the internet. The internet loves to give you feedback. They really do. And some of it's uncomfortable, but it's constructive. But just come up with three names. Which ones do you like? A, B, or C? People will tell you. Just post it on Facebook. You'll get feedback. You don't have to literally take the feedback to heart, but you can like, count the votes. If everybody likes number one, probably a good indication that number one's a good direction to go. Your branding. Now listen, a podcast is a piece of audio content. I don't care what they say about video podcasts and all that nonsense. A podcast is an audio piece of content. By definition, it's an audio file uploaded to the internet to be consumed auditorily. That means there's not a lot of visual aspects to the content. Outside of these days, yes, you are recording a video of your podcast recording, which gives you a piece of video content that you can use for micro content, absolutely. But when people first find your show, that's the first thing that they see. And there's a lot of really bad ones out there. You're like, holy comic sans, someone needs to put down Adobe Illustrator because this should be illegal. Find somebody who knows what they're doing. You guys got VAs in here that are helping you out with content and graphic design, stuff like that, can really help you out. Canva. Uh, Fiverr, not to, you know, say outsourcing. If you're gonna outsource, do it with Sphere Rocket. But if you're, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, Fiverr's a good place. But you can also go to, you can go to Canva too. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of podcast cover art templates in there. And just search podcast cover art. Don't just take the design that's in there and make it your own. Like you gotta go in there and like change some colors and fonts around and whatnot. But it's not going to be better than getting a professional to actually do it where it looks clean presentable and attractive. When someone sees it, they go, I want to press play and listen to this show. That looks cool. And notice that the word podcast outside of my shirt is not on the cover art on there. Equipment. So many people get this wrong too. Oh, I, I mean, we were going to start the podcast, but we don't have the roadcaster yet. We don't have the ring light yet. We don't have the Joe Rogan microphone yet. Guess what? You don't need any of that. You need a microphone that plugs into your iPhone, a quiet space, and you need to hit record. And you start being consistent and conceptualizing what you want to do and see if you even like it. Do I like doing this? Do I want to do this long term? Ask yourself that question. 
Now, I got it. If you're actually serious about launching a podcast for your brand, you're probably not going to use an iPhone. But I dumb it down because that technology that's available on an iPhone these days, there's not much that we can't do. A podcast is one of them. Now, most people won't do that. One of my favorite options is this microphone. It's an Audio-Technica USB microphone. It'll run you about 59 bucks on Amazon. The audio quality is exceptional. It's literally mind-blowing. I can't believe how good the quality is of this microphone. It's like 59 bucks on Amazon. I'm going to give you my podcast equipment guide in a second so you'll be able to download it right to your phone. So you'll have all of these options on here. But this is my travel mic. I've turned more hotel rooms into a podcast studio than I care to admit. And this is the microphone that I use because the quality is exceptional. And it has a USB option. So if you decided to upgrade one day and use an XLR cable into some sort of a receiver, like a Focusrite or a, or a Rodecaster, it'll plug right into there too. You don't have to go buy a new microphone. So multi-purpose. But this is USB plug and play ready to go. Just make sure if you're recording via Zoom or Riverside or whatever it may be, just double check your audio settings because Zoom likes to forget mics and so does Riverside and everything else. The next thing you know, you're recording with your webcam or your laptop cam or your laptop microphone. And next thing you know, you're like, where's my audio? Just double check that quick little side note. Middle of the road, this is a Focusrite Scarlet Studio. These run two, 300 bucks. That receiver, about the size of four decks of cards, plugs right into your computer. That's a condenser mic, plugs right into that via XLR cable and a, a pair of headphones. Again, more steps in the process, more technical stuff to deal with. Take the USB microphone, plug it into your computer and hit record. It's really easier. But some people are like, I really want to, I mean, I've, I have an audio engineering background. I need some, I got it. Okay, cool. This is a great option for you then. All available on Amazon. Again, I'm going to give you my podcast equipment guide to second. And then, of course, the Rodecaster, that's the one. The two's out now. It allows you to uh, have some other bells and whistles. If you have an actual studio set up, that's ideal. You can put four mics in there. That thing plugs into your computer via USB. Um, it's got sound effects and it's got a Bluetooth option and a whole bunch of bells and whistles. It's also going to run you about 900 bucks by the time you get mics and everything. Completely unnecessary. But again, if you're building a podcast studio and you want a set up with multiple microphones, that's going to be ideal. So there's the podcast equipment guide. Go ahead and, and take a picture of that QR code. Give me your name and email address so I can hammer you with emails on a daily basis about shit that you don't want. And there's links right on there uh, that go right to Amazon. So I make it real easy for you because I get this question multiple times on a daily basis. Special. What's the best kind of podcast equipment? So I'm like, you know what? Let me put a podcast equipment guide together uh, for everybody. And in case you didn't get that, just hit me up. Everybody got that before I change slides here. All right. So Sebastian, how do I upload my podcast to Apple? <laughs> you don't. How do I upload it to Spotify? You don't. Where you upload it, though, is a podcast hosting account. Some of you may have heard of Libsyn or our preferred partner is Buzzsprout. I think they're the best platform out there. They all run between 10 and 20 bucks a month, contingent upon how many hours that you're using on a monthly basis. And they all function for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's where your edited episodes live. Notice I said edited episodes. Don't you dare record a podcast episode and not edit it and upload it. I don't know, I'm mind blowing that people do this. They, they really do. It's just a cold start, no intro, no anything. It's, it's painful. But a podcast hosting account allows all of your edited podcast files to live in one specific place. It also gives you a podcast website that has all of your episodes already loaded in it. So all you have to do is register a domain name and point that domain into your, uh, your, your podcast hosting account, a website rather. And then the third option is an RSS feed. RSS stands for really simple syndication. It's been around for a long time. It's basically a way to be able to say, hey, I love your content, Moose, so I want to be able to share. Uh, every time you share a new post on your website, I want to be able to syndicate that on, through my channels, and RSS has made that happen for quite some time now, specifically with podcasts, and here's how it works. Your podcast hosting account is going to give you an RSS feed. It's just a URL. All you simply do is copy that URL, and there's setup options within your podcast hosting account. You click on Apple. It takes you to Apple Podcast Connect. You click log in. You log in with your Apple ID. Do not set up a new one, the one that you buy apps with. Log into your phone, and you're digitally addicted to. Use that Apple ID. Log in, copy and paste your RSS feed. It'll pull your entire show in there. Make sure everything's copacetic. When they pull it in there, you click save, publish, and voila, your podcast is in Apple. 
Uh, Spotify, the other platforms are a little easier. You literally just click get listed in most platforms, at least Buzzsprout. When you click get listed, it'll go ahead and just submit your show to these other platforms. Some of them do require you to log in and submit it, but that's how your podcast gets into a uh, directory and distribution platform like Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody clear about that? Okay. Interviews. <sighs> Another very, very challenging part of the podcast process that makes me cringe and I'm trying to get out and do something about it on a daily basis because there's just a lot of bad podcast interviews out there. As of late, one of my favorites is the constant nodding of your head when you're interviewing someone. Don't do that. You're not agreeing with everyone they say. You, don't, you're, you are not agreeing with everything your guests say, so just stop nodding and it's wildly annoying to watch when you look back and you're like... <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's uh, very comparable to, to, to filler words. Um, uh, right, 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 right is an artificial attempt at trying to get validation from your listeners or your audience. There's no need to do that. Because guess what? When you're getting validated, they're going to let you know and they're going to say, yes, I agree. Or they'll shake their head or they'll do whatever. But this whole notion of right, 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 can you please agree with me? Can you please agree with me? Don't do that. Okay, so when you're interviewing someone, those are just a couple of things. Number one, be aware of the words that are coming out of your mouth. Just slow down a little bit. It's been a big, 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 big part of my journey, being able to slow down. Because I'm like, I gotta go, I gotta hustle, I gotta go. And I have my breath, I, I, I practice uh, Ifiji breath work, which is pretty much hyperventilating for 45 minutes in like a yoga class setting. And it cal it's calmed me down significantly and radically changed my life. But when I first met my breath work practitioner, at the gym, uh, I, I walk up to her one day and she's, you know, she's just like, just, she's just dialed in. And I'm like, Wah! and she goes, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, what, I, but I, I she goes, Shh, it's all bullshit. It's just nonsense. You're just talking to yourself talk. And I was like, wow, that was a lot. And she goes, you also need to slow down. And I'm like, slow down, are you kidding? I gotta hustle, I gotta change the world. I gotta go do all that. Okay, fine, why do I have to slow down? She said, because you're going to miss it. And I said, miss what? She said, whatever's next for you. And that was terrifying for me. And I'm like, we're going to slow it down. So when you're interviewing someone, make it a conversation. Joe Rogan, whether you're a fan or not, is one of the best podcast interviewers to ever, ever do it. In the history of media, in my opinion. He's just good because he makes a podcast interview feel like a natural organic conversation so that's what you want to go and aim for but i learned from the great larry king the 80 20 rule your guests talk 80 percent of the time you talk 20 percent of the time i joke a lot and i write a lot of material around bad, bad podcast hosts but i always like to say you know you have one job as a podcast host and that's to ask questions and shut your mouth. That's very hard for a lot of people to do. My favorite is, well, I ask you about a question, I'm interviewing you, and you're telling me all about this, and I immediately tell you a comparable story of how that happened in my life, and I make the interview completely about me now and not my guest. The audacity of some people. Could you imagine someone's giving you their time for you to interview them, and you sit there and talk about you? Shh, quiet. That's your only job. Ask questions. Lock it up. Marketing. How do I market a podcast? Well, there aren't a lot of ways to market a podcast, but I've identified a couple of ways. Number one, you can be a guest on other people's podcasts. And when people say, hey, how do people find you? What do you want to talk about? What do you want to promote? What do you want to plug? They can include links in their content. They can plug your show. Being a guest on other podcasts, phenomenal way to do that. Second is creating micro content. We're going to get into that in just a second here. And then I'm going to also talk about exactly what that looks like for your VA team to do it and how we can really help you guys streamline all that stuff together. Your guests can share the episode that they were on with you. They can share the content. They can tag you. Most of the time they won't do that. They'll tell you they can, but they're liars. But there's ways to try and help enforce that. Like, hey, man, can you just do the right thing and just share the episode? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no, I mean, like, really share it. Tag me and I'll share it and it's gonna help each other out. You gotta be real clear with people on that. And then you can run ads to your micro content. So you're posting reels and clips and audiograms and images. You can boost the post on Facebook and on Instagram and you can run small, a dollar a day, two dollars a day, five bucks a day and drive traffic to that micro content. And the end result 
should be for them to click on some sort of URL. That's the objective of the ad campaign. And that URL that they're clicking on is the podcast episode. That's gonna help impact your downloads and increase subscribers. Now I'm not saying go spend thousands and thousands of dollars on an ad campaign for your content, but it's effective to be able to at least, when you're first getting started, how do I get people to listen to the podcast? Well, Apple and Spotify are kind of like a search engine. If you go to Apple Podcasts and you search whatever your interest is, you're going to find podcasts all around what your interests are on there. And that's going to continue to become the norm on there because people are now depending on existing content platforms out there to find things that interest them for whatever it may be. So what else is possible? Let's talk about that for a second. I firmly believe that starting a podcast solves all of your social media content problems. We talked briefly about that a few minutes ago. One podcast episode, five to 10 pieces of micro content per episode. We're building a content catalog and we've got content to post every single day, which you should be doing anyway. Because if you're not in the news feed, you really don't exist. Why? Because that's where the eyeballs are at. They're not looking at billboards. They're not listening to the radio. They're not watching TV commercials. They're in the newsfeed. We are digitally addicted. We have been for quite some time, okay? We just doom scroll constantly. I mean, I catch myself. I mean, it's like my daughter's been really good with it. She's like, Dad, I, I make a conscious effort to just stay away from my phone. But it's very hard to do. Statistics would tell us the average person is no further away from their phone than two and a half feet at any given time. We sit there and we doom scroll and then we post and we sit and we wait for that first like to give us that shot of dopamine that goes to our brain and goes, man, I'm awesome. And then we rinse and repeat that process. There's a little bit of like human psychology of how we operate. With that being said, you wanna make sure your brand has presence and is consistently showing up, both your personal brand and your brand's content. A podcast makes that process just that much easier. Let's talk about that. You can repurpose your content into micro content, uh, excuse me, micro videos, reels content, audiograms, that's an image with an audio clip slapped on the back of it with the little squiggly lines, that's called an audiogram. You can use promo images, including uh, your podcast cover art in them, and you can create blog posts. Uh, specifically with all kinds of AI tools these days. You can transcribe your podcast. You can get show notes generated from your podcast. You can generate a blog post from all of that content being generated. And you can take one podcast episode and multiply it into several pieces of content that are strategic and you're hitting on all, fire on all cylinders. Blog posts, content, videos, images, and you're finding out what works. Micro videos, that's an example of it. Obviously, we've moved a lot more to Reels format these days, so the Reels format um, is, is, would be more than the old school square format. You can still post these on Instagram. That's a way to be able to get, to post a video that's longer than 90 seconds you would post with a video. Audiograms, that's a static image with, a, with an audio clip put on it, and uh, it's saved as a video. So it's just basically a teaser promo, as you can see, the show's branded, I'm branded, the name of the podcast episode's on there, the episode number, the call to action's on there. It just looks attractive to somebody who wants to listen to the podcast and go, well, new episode's up, let me click here. You can share all these clips on stories on Instagram and use the swipe up option and include a link. That link should be the link directly to the episode, okay? Make it easy for people to listen to the episode. I see a lot of podcast micro content, but there's no, cool, love the clip, where's the link to the episode? So make sure you, you leave that, you, you include that in there. Uh, images as well, Canva helps out with that as you can see, include the podcast cover art and branding in there, my guest, my guest brand, um, guest, uh, guest picture, their brand, etc. the little squiggly lines, they actually move when the person talks too, so it identifies as a piece of podcast uh, content. And then schedule it, uh, great, another thing your VAs can help you do. Once we get this content created, let's get it scheduled out and let's forget about it, let's bulk record, by the way, Bulk recording is your key to staying in the podcast game as long as possible. Because if you think it's going to be every Monday, you're going to roll into the office and be like, well, it's time to record another podcast episode. That's not sustainable. Because it starts off fun and then you have to record every single week and it starts to feel like work. And when it starts to feel like work and it's not fun anymore, we quit. That's just human nature. So make sure you're bulk recording, creating the micro content from each episode and then getting it scheduled out and going back to what you do best. Running your life, your business, your family, whatever the hell you like to do. So how do I do all this, Sebastian? This sounds fantastic in theory, but I've never done any of this. Well, all of you in this room, a majority of you in this room have virtual assistants. 
So you have people that can actually take a game plan when taught and educated on the game plan and go execute on it. So you can continue to do what you do best, record new podcast episodes, upload the raw content, and go back to your day. So we specifically help people do all of that. But since you guys already have resources, again, maybe somebody's like, hey, listen, I don't want to use my VAs. They're already tied up doing something else. I want to, I, we definitely want to get a podcast launch and I have to do all the work. Let's have a conversation. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about what our 90-day program, but knowing, you got to know your customer. Knowing my customer in this room right now, already having resources at a virtual assistant mastermind group, you guys already have the horsepower and the teamwork to be able to go and do that. So what we've done is we've created a solution where you can take all of my secrets, my entire system, and go and run with it. Rona. <laughs> Jesus, is that you? <laughs> so uh, he, here's what that looks like. So first of all, our program is 90 day, it's a 90 day launch program. It's everything you need to launch podcasts in 90 days or less. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching with me for a month. We get in there, we build a brand strategy, concept, idea you can get excited about. It includes every single thing you could possibly need to start a podcast. Your launch strategy, brand development, content, intros, outros, teasers, production, all the back end heavy lifting. All you do is look cool and record episodes. My team handles everything. Again, most of you have a team that can go help out with that and be able to help facilitate a majority of that. With that being said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> with that being said, uh, we've created a done with you solution specifically for our friends 